tonight on Connecticut's news station, a consumer alert as officials see a rise in credit card skimmers across the state. What's being done to protect your personal information? Plus, police have made a fifth arrest in the shooting death of a man at a hookah lounge. We'll bring you a rundown of who's now being accused in this murder in Middletown. And a major milestone in creating offshore wind energy. How new funding will help upgrade our infrastructure and could even save you some money. Now at 6, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good evening. Thanks for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 6. I'm Sarah Sanchez. And I'm Bridget Bjorlo. Amid a rise in credit card skimmers, state officials are showing you how to spot the scammers. Yeah, they also have a warning for criminals saying get caught and you'll be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Fox 61's Matt Karen has what you need to know. With every beep and swipe comes a risk. There has been an increase in credit card skimming over the past couple of years, and in particular over the past couple of months. Just in the last four or five weeks, we have uh, discovered at least 12 to 15 incidents before they've happened. It's sophisticated, overseas-inspired organized crime, and staying one step ahead of the criminals is tricky. There are people coming from Eastern Bloc countries, and they're recruiting people here in the United States uh, to help them with these crimes, usually as being a, a mule for planting a device, removing a device, or even, as I mentioned previously, with the ATM skimming and being the collector. A card skimmer is usually installed on top of an existing credit card terminal as an overlay. They can be hard to spot. One of the real issues is, is why is this, this, this technology so easy to get on the black web? Um, anybody can go out there and find this equipment and get into business. Tips to spot a skimmer scanner include looking for unusual gaps or cracks, tampered stickers, harder to press keys and buttons, or mismatched colors. This is the, some of the most inhuman, heartfelt type of crime you see. These are... Um, you know, folks who really need their SNAP benefits to take care of a kid who needs a meal. Governor Lamont says scammers typically increase their activity at the beginning of each month when SNAP food benefits get reloaded onto cards, cards that don't have the same security features as your credit card. One of the challenges that we have in the state regarding our SNAP cards is that they are magnetic strips. So they don't have the ability to tap, right? And, and, they're, and they also cannot right now be loaded into a wallet. To give you an idea of the scope of the problem from 2023 to 2024, 3.7 million in Connecticut SNAP benefits alone were stolen. State police advise you to use gas pumps close to buildings, avoid third-party ATMs not associated with your brick-and-mortar bank, and use your other hand to cover your PIN code. People who do this have no shame in who they're targeting. The Department of Social Services says they've processed nearly 8,000 applications for replacement SNAP benefits. So many they've had to start a specific unit just to deal with all of that paperwork. They also say, though, that federal funding for the reimbursement is limited. It's a pilot program and it's set to expire in October. Reporting into Britain outside the Stop and Shop, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Happening right now is shootings under investigation in West Haven. Police say a man was shot in the leg and arm on Elm Street around 3 this morning. They say he walked to a Sitco gas station to get help. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Anyone with information on the shooting should give police a call. Middletown police have arrested a fifth person in connection to a murder outside a hookah lounge. Chauncey Wilson has been charged with murder. Last year, 20-year-old Jonathan Semedy was shot and killed. Police say he was shot by multiple people in the parking lot of Hidden Hookah Lounge on South Main Street. Akil Booker, Gene Daniels, and Gianni Marmol have also been charged with murder, but that was back in September. Mayrenas Nunez was charged with tampering with evidence as well. Wilson's being held on a million dollars bond. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal has released an extensive report featuring dozens of accounts of sexual assault and harassment in the Coast Guard. Investigators spoke with more than 80 people. Blumenthal says their stories span from the 1970s all the way up to the 2020s. He says the stories have common themes, including a culture in the Coast Guard Academy that discouraged people from reporting abuse. This report shows a culture of cover-up 
in the Coast Guard that is not passed. It's an ongoing, persistent, pervasive problem of sexual assault and harassment. And it's not limited to the academy. It is fleet-wide affecting enlisted and officers. Senator Blumenthal will hold a hearing tomorrow that will feature testimony from five whistleblowers. It's set to take place at the Connecticut College in New London at 11 in the morning. And switching gears to your weather impact, a rainy and gloomy day, and it looks like the rain isn't going anywhere. It was really hard to shake the gloom. We haven't yeah. had such a gloomy day in quite a while. Meteorologist Ryan Breton is here. Usually if we have clouds, Ryan, that kind of breeze through and they're out of here. Right. It's funny stepping outside today, too. Really cool, actually. You could almost wear a sweatshirt middle of the day today, and there was some mist and drizzle falling in spots. Uh, we do have a little bit of dry air starting to come into northern Connecticut. You can see that here in Hartford. We have some breaks in the clouds here, but in New Haven, it's still pretty gray and overcast as we see it right now. Satellite imagery showing clouds trying to slip south a bit. We do have a few sprinkles and very light showers uh, skimming the shoreline and out over Long Island Sound. So for the rest of the night, it will be mostly cloudy, a cool night with temperatures in the upper 50s to low and mid 60s, a little muggy in spots, but nothing like what we've had most of this summer. So you can probably give the AC a break and just open up the windows. Tomorrow will have showers developing mostly in the afternoon and a little bit warmer tomorrow, but still well below average with high temperatures between 70 and 75. So your morning hours tomorrow are mostly cloudy. And then from afternoon into the evening, there will be off and on scattered showers. You'll need the rain gear, but it won't be raining the entire time. 74 of the high tomorrow in both Hartford and New Haven. Still a cool 68, though, in Waterbury. Tropical storm Debbie just off the coast of South Carolina right now with winds to 60 miles per hour. But its movement is still very, very slow to the north northeast. It speeds up, though, as it approaches the northeast Friday into the weekend, and that's good news for our weekend forecast. I'll be back with more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Ryan. Happening today, southeastern Connecticut's taking another big step to cut down on how much you're spending on energy. Local, state, and federal officials gathered at the state pier in New London to unveil their latest project, creating offshore wind energy. And Fox 61's Julie LeBlanc explains. We are on now our second wind farm. Energy leaders in Connecticut celebrating a major milestone, years in the making. Six years ago, this was a vision, not a reality. Six years ago, this pier did not look like this. This pier in New London is where turbines are being built, using wind from the water to create energy. We know what offshore wind means for having a clean grid. We know what it means for um, improving the reliability of our grid. Um, but we also know how important it is that we can deliver offshore wind in a way that's affordable. Deep Commissioner Katie Dyke says they're now getting funding from the feds for a project called Power Up New England to upgrade the energy grid in the region. Going to a carbon free grid is not going to be easy. There are unknowns that are all being worked out. This was an unknown six years ago. Now it's here. Now we're deploying the wind. Now we're building out the infrastructure for transmission. The first turbine is leaving from the state pier this afternoon and heading east of Long Island. Eventually, it'll be followed by more than 60 others. So once they get out to the wind farm, um, we will take one of these, those towers, which the one that has the cone section, we will load that on top of the tower section that is sort of flat. Creating, Ulysses Hammond says one tower standing more than 440 feet tall. New London State Pier is in business. The money, sitting at $389 million, will go toward upgrading two transmission sites in Massachusetts and Montville to improve the way they use offshore wind to create power. It'll also be used to upgrade batteries to keep the technology running. These batteries on steroids will enable New England, and particularly Connecticut, to store power and the transmission facilities to send it to where it is needed when it is needed. And New England, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal says needs that help badly as we face rising energy costs. Though customers won't see the impacts of this project for about seven years, Blumenthal says it's all part of the long-term solution. The federal government is putting a lot of taxpayer money into these projects with the understanding, the clear understanding, that the benefits are going to go to consumers. Our energy future is like a puzzle. We have the outlines, but we have no idea how we're going to fill in the middle. 
Well, transmission is such a critical part of filling in the middle. In New London, Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, tonight, a lot of questions for a Connecticut company. Medical care costs are soaring, and CVS Health says they're struggling to keep up profits, so they'll be cutting costs. CVS says it will be focusing on the insurance company they owned, which is Hartford-based Aetna. Aetna's leaders said a bounce back is possible just three months ago. CVS Health slashed their profit guidance today. That's the number they'd expect to make by the end of the quarter. The problem is this is the third consecutive time they've had to do this and medical costs are only getting higher. So they're planning to cut $2 billion worth of expenses over the next several years, saying they'll be using AI and automation. They claim this will streamline services. Fox 61 still pressing for an answer, though, if Connecticut insurance jobs are on the line. And we do know of one person who's already out of a job. Today, Aetna President Brian Kane, the top executive, was let go after less than a year on the job. CEO Karen Lynch said leadership changes are necessary to move forward. A spokesperson from CVS Health told Fox 61, quote, Hartford is the longstanding headquarter, and we remain committed to the local community now and in the future. A new campaign looks to raise awareness of the harmful health impacts of lead, specifically for kids. The Lead Free CT campaign is launching a new program that provides homeowners and landlords with the opportunity to make older homes lead free at no cost to them. It will also work to educate communities on lead laws and safety. I have heard from so many families who've said to me, I thought that was like an old problem. Like, isn't lead paint in homes like something of the past? Well, guess what? We still have old housing stock right here in Connecticut. And for more information on how you can apply to be part of the program, just head to our website, fox61.com.